Okay, the, um, another little video boost I wanted to do was on what is called PI for amino acids. And the PI is what is called the isoelectric point. And every amino acid has an isoelectric point. Um, the PI is not the isoelectric point. The PI is related to the isoelectric point. So the PI is the pH at which the amino acid has zero charge. Okay? So what is I? I is what is called the isoelectric point. Or I just stands for isoelectric, okay? So every molecule has what, it, what we call an isoelectric structure. Now for most amino acids, the, P, the, the isoelectric structure is this structure. And the way you compute the PI is you take the pKa of the amino group and the pKa of the carboxylic acid group and you divide it by two. And that gives you the P, I, I keep saying pH, but I mean PI. So that's how you get the PI, and there's a really good reason for that, okay? Remember, the, PA, the pKa of the amino group is around nine, a pKa of a carboxylic acid group is around two, okay? So we're talking somewhere in the five to six range. For most amino acids, that's the pH at which you have no charge. And of course, this is the kind of structure we usually write at around neutral pH. The, P, the isoelectric point usually occurs for most amino acids a little bit below 7. Um, now, what I want to show you is a more complex amino acid and how I would figure out its, its isoelectric structure and its PI. So, for example, and I'm approximating my pKa's here, okay, but for example, supposing I had um, glutamic acid, which has this structure. Okay, this is glutamic acid. Okay, nice amino acid. Okay, now, in class we kind of went over this idea of titrating it. Okay, so what I did in class was I started at very low pH. So say I started at a pH equal to 1.5. If I was at a pH of 1.5, this is how the molecule would exist. The molecule would have... The amino groups almost completely protonated, the carboxylic acid groups almost completely protonated, and this other carboxylic acid group almost completely protonated. The pKa of this group is at approximately 9. That's the pKa. I hope pKa's are starting to mean something. The pKa of this group is probably around 2, maybe 2.3, something like that. Um, I'm saying approximately, and this pKa is approximately three. These can be looked up on a table, the table's in your textbook in the chapter on amino acids. Um, sometimes on tests I give people the tables, but I don't expect you to memorize pKa's, but I want you to have a feel for this. Okay, so if I started raising the pH, what that means is that I'm adding hydroxide. As I add hydroxide, which proton is gonna come off first? This proton's gonna come off at first because this has the lowest pKa. The um, carboxylic acid with the lowest pKa is the one that's the most acidic. So what happens? When I get exactly to a pKa equal to 2.3, this is what happens. So you can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa plus the log, and I derived this in class, it's not very complicated. B minus over HB. And we talked about this in class, and I want you to keep thinking about it because it's going to help you understand acids and bases better. But if I get to exactly a pKa of 2.3, uh, if I get exactly to a pH equal to 2.3, then I'm at the pKa. So 2.3 will equal 2.3 plus the log of B minus over HB. 
if I do this, 1 will equal the log of b minus over hb. We went over this in class, and we talked about what this means. So, so what does this mean? Um, I'm sorry, 0. So then what would you do? You take the anti-log or the inverse log. So 10 to the 0 equals 1. So 1 equals the log of b minus over h bit. Okay, so we want equals b minus over h bit. Okay, so when you're exactly at the pH that equals the pKa, okay, the log of b minus over h bit equals 0. That corresponds to a value of 1 for the ratio between b minus and h bit. That means these are exactly in a one-to-one -one ratio. That means you've got 50% of this and 50% of that, okay? The, the great thing at being at exactly the pH that equals the pK is you know exactly what structures you have, okay? So having done this, I know what I've got at pK, pH equals 2.3. So at pH 2.3, I have exactly 50% of this Now, this doesn't mean I don't have other structures, because this is an aqueous system. But it, what I'm defining here are the major structures. So my major structures consist of these two molecules, these two forms of this molecule, and, okay, I know I have 50% of this and 50% of this at a pH equal to 2.3. So, are either of these the isoelectric structure? Okay, when I look at this, this has a net charge of plus one. Okay, plus one. This has a net charge of zero. This is the isoelectric stru structure. All right, now I'm going to keep titrating this. So let's keep titrating it up. Where would I go next? The next pit stop on my titration is going to be 3. All right, what's going to be going on at 3? So let's write that. I'll write that this over here. All right, so what if I go to a pH equal to 3? What's going on? 3 is really basic for this um, group. So at a pH of 3, I would have... This completely deprotonated. Why is that? Because I'm on the other side of this threshold, right? I've moved over that way in terms of pH. So now I've got an anionic form for that, and that's going to be the major structure. This 3 is the threshold for this group. At pH equals 3, B minus is going to equal HB. So this is going to be in equilibrium with this form. And at pH equals 3, I know I'm going to have 50% of this and 50% of that. Okay? Now, again, where's my isoelectric structure? This is the isoelectric structure. Okay, now, as I showed you before, for a typical amino acid, the pI, which is the pH at which you have the isoelectric structure, is an average of the two pKa's. But this particular amino acid has three pKa's. The isoelectric structure, which is shown here as well, occurs between this pH, 2.3, and this pH, 3. So for this, so this structure occurs right in the middle there. If that's going to be your dominant structure, you have to be at the pI. So the pI here is going to equal 2 plus 3 divided by 2. Okay, it's going to be the average of the values that surround the isoelectric structure, the pHs that surround the isoelectric structure. So that, what, where the isoelectric structure dominates is right in the middle of those two. Um, so this is going to be, you know, roughly, this is just approximating at 2.5. So if I got the pH exactly at 2.5, I would have almost all of the structure. If I'm at 2.3, I have these two. If I'm at 3, I have these two. The pI occurs right in the middle. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so if we keep titrating, let's go one more step. So where's my next pit stop? My last pit stop is a pH of 9. 
that's really basic, okay, it should make, start to make intuitive sense that the nitrogen group is the most basic. So at a pH of 9, these are going to be essentially deprotonated, the two carboxylic acids. Think about them. They're acid groups. A pH of 9 is basic. It's very alkaline. So carboxylic acids are going to de be deprotonated. Why are these such weak bases? Because they're resonance stabilized. You should start integrating that with what you learned last semester. This free amino group is pretty basic, so it's really holding on to its H until you get to very high pH. All right, so what happens at pH 9? At pH 9, we hit that point, that equivalence point, and we know that we have 50% of this. Now we've gone beyond the isoelectric point, all right? This this has a net charge of what? Minus 1, right? And this has a net charge of minus 2. So we are really basic. These are not natural conditions. Okay? Um, but it, at this pH we did have 50% of this and 50% of this. And again, it could be calculated using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, okay? So I hope that helps a little bit with amino acids. And everything we do with amino acids can be directly applied to, applied to proteins, although we're taking a little bit of a leap in terms of um, the structure being a little different. Okay, well, I'll see you in class.